Well, for more on what's happening on the markets, we're joined by Kim Kahi Forrest, founder and chief investment officer of Boca Capital Partners. Thanks so much for making time for us today, Kim. Absolutely. So U.S. markets, I kind of skipped over those at the, the top there, but managing to eke out some very small gains today. But it has been quite a negative month for equity markets. What do you think has been dragging uh, on the sentiment? Sure. Well, I think two things. First, September is always an extremely uh, nervous month for investors. And I think that's a lot of because um, businesses and the people that they sell to have been on vacation. Yeah. So if you are a manufacturer of large systems, you're going to have to try to close those deals while your people are on vacation and they're on vacation. So it's always iffy if people can get done what they say they were going to get done in the quarter. So that's thing one. But I think the Fed has really complicated investors thinking lives and Whenever they came out with the hawkish stance this last Wednesday, that kind of sealed the deal and the market's gone down from there. Investors are worried that longer means maybe all of 2024 at this current rate or higher. And I think that is causing nervousness among investors. Do you think that's going to be the, the reality that we might not see any rate cuts in, in 2024? It did look like the dot plot was suggesting that there could be some later in the year, just fewer than uh, the previous dot plot had suggested. Sure. Well, I think investors, at least in the U.S., have kind of, I don't know how they could, but they have forgotten that we are going to have an election, a presidential election. Mm -hmm. And the Fed really does not like to mess with interest rates whenever um, we're going through the election cycle. And that could be why a lot of the dot plot changed for next year. Now, our Fed is saying, and I believe them, that they are extremely data dependent. So I think if the data shows that they need to cut, they will cut regardless of the political environment. But I think the data would have to be pretty darn persuasive. Speaking about the political environment with this uh, potential government shutdown sort of hanging <laughs> over things right now, what sort of an influence do you think that could end up having on sentiment on, on markets? Well, actually, I think some of the down move yesterday was because people were realizing, uh-oh, we're probably going to close the government. And do mm. we really care? Some of us do. And it's the people who are looking for that um, demographic data and the, the, the data from the government that lets the Fed make decisions. So um, at the first week of October, we're supposed to get the jobs number. If the government's closed, we're not getting that number. And I think that's extremely um, difficult for investors to get their head around. Yeah, we, we. I mean, investors have been so data dependent because the Fed has been, you know, projecting that that data dependence as well. So, you know, missing out on uh, that information to be able to, you know, guide things would be, uh, yeah, very interesting uh, scenario potentially. Um, when it comes to, uh, you know, some of the the forces at play right now, artificial intelligence has um, obviously stoked a lot of excitement so far this year. A lot of questions about whether it's too much excitement at, at, at this point when it comes to a couple of these companies. But where are you potentially seeing some opportunities these days? Sure. I um, started out in uh, my very first industry was writing software for engineering applications. And then I moved into AI. So I am pro AI. And I think that it could be a complete game changer for especially businesses to be able to deploy AI selectively and get greater productivity out of employees. That's really how I think it can be best used. But that said, I think it's pretty far off on actually being able to be monetized. And I think the hype cycle is maybe at peak hype right now, especially about things like chat GBT being able to, you know, solve the problem of cancer or world hunger or whatever. So I don't believe it can do that. But um, I believe that the winners right now are probably not going to be the winners in the long run, but there will be winners in AI. And I like to generally play them, especially this early 
in the uh, game of a new technology by um, playing in the world of semiconductors because I don't know what the application is going to be, but I know it's going to be delivered on a semiconductor. Yeah, that is interesting because we're going to be uh, digging into Micron's results uh, in just a, a few minutes here. And I'm reading a headline that says that Micron is predicting a, a worse loss than feared in the current quarter. Um, so we'll, we'll get more into the details when, when it comes to Micron. But it, when it comes to earnings sort of overall, Kim, um, I mean, the next earnings season is already on our doorstep just a, a couple of weeks away here. What should investors be prepared for, do you think? Well, I think they should be prepared that the companies probably have met their guidance that they gave out um, in July. And why do I think that? Well, because I haven't seen any pre-announcements. And if you know you have materially missed your earnings, you must pre-announce. So we're in that window. The next week will be, again, a place to watch for pre-announcements. But even more important, whenever companies uh, announce their earnings, what we're really looking for is what's going to happen in the next quarter and maybe the next year. What is their pipeline and what changes have they seen? And I don't think anybody knows at this point what that could be. But I am hopeful that um, at least here in the States, things aren't degrading terribly. And that long looked for recession doesn't seem to be on the doorstep at this time.